All right, welcome to another episode of Container as a Service Academy. I'm Christopher Lillian Sopi, CTO for Solutions and co-founder here at Tigera. And today we're gonna to talk about container registries. So it's still a while ago we talked about container runtimes. And one of the things we said, if you remember, if you've seen this one already, uh, the container runtimes, one of the things it does after it constructs the container after it makes the kernel calls to create the C group, the namespace, et cetera, to create the sandbox for the container, it then goes and acquires or builds um, using external resources the objects that you want to place in that container. A container is just a, a sandboxed memory space uh, and, and basically set of uh, quotas and, and fences. So we now need to put something in it. So the container runtime might go do all your compiling and everything else for you if it, you just handed a, a Git repo. But you can also have container registries. So in advance, say as part of your CI process that we talked about earlier, you decide that you're just going to build this container. And actually, you have to in order to run the CI process anyway. What you can then do is you can actually just store that container in a registry your own or their commercial and open source registries that are out there. Uh, similarly, you might just leverage other people's containers. So let's say you're using Postgres in your application and there's plenty of official Postgres containers out there and they're stored in registries. Uh, there are registries like Quay, Docker Hub, et cetera, that um, you can actually stick your, your container in as part of your CI process or somebody else sticks in because of their CI process. And you can just pull that. So you don't have to do the build. You don't have to do anything else. You just pull the image down um, and install it. Maybe that container image does require a bit of building, but it's still, at the end of the day, uh, you have a prepackaged deployment that you can push in to your container. So. That's what a container registry is. So again, there are ones out there on the, on the internet. Uh, Docker Hub and Quay are two more fairly common ones. OpenShift has one as well. Um, you can also run them internally. So there are a lot of organizations out there who do not want to be pulling code from the outside world, even if the outside world checks that code. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. So they may run an internal registry. And then all code, all containers must be built off of that internal registry. And then there is another process where somebody vets the code that goes into that internal registry. One of the, so basically registry at top level is a repository for pre-built containers. Some of the ones either public or private, part of that pro, uh, public or, or, or private, open source or commercial. Some of the features that you might find in registry beyond just being a, a repository of, of pre-built containers is things like container scanning, et cetera. So like, uh, for example, if you commit code to a repo, it may not actually be accepted and become available in the repo till after it goes through a container scan, uh, which we've also talked about earlier, container scanning, just to make sure that you there's nothing, no, no known vulnerabilities uh, in, that, uh, in that code. So container repo now can also do double duty as container scanning, et cetera. So that's really all it is. It is a repository that hopefully someone applies some level of uh, governance on. Some of them have very little governance, some of them have very strong governance, uh, especially private repos might have a, a lot of governance around them. So you don't have to go build all these containers or have uh, the container runtime build them on your behalf. You just take one, a known good one and use it. Anyway, that's what container registries are. Um, there's a lot more details, which we'll get into now, but that's an introduction. Thank you.